Manchester City finally put an end to their European struggles, clenching the Champions League final in a surprisingly even matchup against Inter. What was expected to be a one-sided affair actually turned out to be a thrilling tactical battle, and Inter made life for Man City extremely difficult, whilst also having a number of incredible opportunities that could have taken the game into extra time. So how was it that Inter were able to frustrate Man City for the majority of the match? And what half-time change by Pep led to their eventual win? Let's take a look. Welcome back to Football Meta. For in-depth stats from over 17 different leagues across the globe, make sure to check out the new X-Value platform by Sokerman, with in-depth match previews, reviews, player profiles, and team advanced metrics to help you improve your understanding of the game. The link is in the description down below. First things first, let's take a look at both teams' structure and how they matched up on the pitch. Man City lined up in their now common 3-2-4-1 formation, with John Stones as the second pivot alongside Rodri, forming this box in the centre that has been one of the tactical revolutions of the season. But what we saw on the pitch was completely different from what was expected. Inter stuck to their 3-5-2 lineup, which has been their go-to formation for the whole season, with Barella the only change from their last match in the second leg of the semi-final against Milan. The vast majority of the first half, Man City held the ball in their own half, but struggled to build any substantial attacks. And Inter's game plan was clear from the onset, and dictated Man City's tempo very effectively. First, they did look to press Man City high up the pitch, with the initial idea from Inter being to block off the central passes into the two pivots, being shadow marked by the strikers. However, one rotation forced Inter to adapt their positioning. While City lined up as a 3-2-4-1, it instantly transformed into a 3-4-3 diamond the iconic system used in Cruyff's total football. This rotation meant Rodri could pick up a position between the two, with De Bruyne and Stones shifting further out wide. To counter this, Inter raised the positioning of Chanaloglu onto Rodri, with Bastoni shifting up to man-mark Stones in the centre. While it was initially a 3v2 at the back, Barella was tasked with closing down Ake to form a 3v3. And once again, while it may seem as if this left them a man short in the centre, Dumfries or Damian would push up to even out the centre. This made life for Man City very difficult, and Inter defended extremely well from this position. What made Man City so dangerous throughout the season was their ability to break through the centre, but Inter ensured that this was not going to happen, and with Man City moving their midfielders wider and wider, it completely vacated the centre of the pitch. This resulted in City often circulating the ball around the back, with Inter having very clear pressing triggers and continuously forcing them back, resulting in Man City looking to play over this central block into Haaland but Inter and Acerbi completely marked him out of the game, resulting in Haaland having only one touch in the box for the whole first half. Depending on which flank City moved down, either Damian or Bastoni would shift to cover City's midfielder, while the other would join Acerbi to consistently keep a 2v1 against Haaland in the centre. We can see that in this frame here. Damian steps out onto Haaland, with Bastoni dropping into a position and leaving Stones free. Man City kept this shape for the whole first half, even with De Bruyne coming off for Foden. While Inter defended extremely well in the first half, their main issue was not being able to build any substantial attacks, rushing to move the ball forward and looking to hit City instantly on the counter-attack. With Inter's more structured attacks, the main objective was to still move the ball forward quickly. Man City kept a very interesting 4-2-4 defensive shape, with this central box ensuring City could outnumber Inter's central three. We can see that here, City with this 4-2-4 shape and giving Inter's back three space to receive. Inter looked to counter this by having Chanaloglu or Barella move out wide on the left flank, with Bernardo Silva or Grealish being the ones to rush back and cover if this is where they played the ball. The most interesting aspect of this shape is also the double role of Stones playing as the right back when City were out of possession, ensuring Inter couldn't outnumber the defence with their wing backs. Given how well Inter were defending, with Man City having very little space to exploit, Pep was forced into a tactical switch at half time. While they kept to the same 3-4-3 diamond shape, it looked as if City's instructions were to tighten up their midfield shape. While in the first half, De Bruyne and Stones were often the outlet options on the flanks, vacating the pitch in the centre, in the second half, Gundogan and Stones operated more in the half spaces, with the outlet options on the flanks being Silva and Grealish. Silva would drop his positioning more frequently and was a lot more involved in City's play. And with Silva in this position, it would drag Di Marco off his line, freeing up more space in behind for either Foden or Stones to run into, subsequently freeing up more central options and space to rotate from flank to flank. This positioning, and a good example of how Pep's system works, is what led to their goal. In the build-up, Stones and Silva swapped their positioning, with Silva forming the diamond in the centre in an extremely compact position, 
and Stone's positioning further back meant Di Marco had to adopt a position ready to close him down. This half a metre gap was enough for Akanji to pick out a beautiful disguise run by Silva, and a lucky deflection led to the winning goal by Rodri. In a game where no one gave Inter a chance, they finished the match with arguably the better chances of the two teams, with Lukaku and Di Marco having some excellent opportunities to take the game into extra time. Inter came into the game extremely well prepared, and Inzaghi's men should be proud of what they've achieved this season. On the other hand, Man City's domination continues, winning the treble and putting their European drought to rest. And now let me know what you think. What did you make of the Champions League final and do you think City deserved to win? Leave your thoughts in the comments down below. So the Champions League final is the biggest event in club football, but just six months ago we witnessed one of the greatest World Cup finals ever played. So why not check out this video on Argentina versus France to reminisce on the tactics used in the World Cup final. As always, if you enjoyed this content then please leave a like and subscribe for more. Thanks for watching.